and that's the work of the ministry, but the purpose of it all is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to take care of the Lord's people. And so that was happened on the Sabbath day. If you uh, were to look in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 1, and I think it's verse 10, I better look and see to make sure I'm correct, or I'll misquote another scripture. I don't know how many I've got on my record today. Three notches and I'm done, I think, something like that. Revelation chapter 1, and I think it's verse 10. Yeah, this is John, and he's giving the account of what he was doing. Here he is exiled on the island of Patmos, and he is going to talk about the things that God revealed to him. And he said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. Well, what's the Lord's Day? Well, it refers to the day in which what? What? In the day that Jesus rose from the dead. You know what John was doing exiled on the island of Patmos? He was not keeping the Sabbath day. He was keeping the Lord's day. He was worshiping the Lord. You say, well, pastor, it looks to me as though he was in a trance. No, my friend, he was just spirit-filled. And that's what you ought to be every Lord's day. As Sunday is God's day. And I believe, pastor, are you going to preach Sabbath day rules for you? No, I think I'll preach it the way the Lord did. It belongs to Jesus. All right, the, the, the Sunday, the Lord's day, is not for man, but for the Lord. You want to put it that way? That'd be all right with me. I want to tell you, Christian, that what the Bible is teaching here in Mark chapter 2, first of all, applies to a day of rest, not necessarily to a day of worship. Now, I understand that the Pharisees would have dedicated much of their Sabbath to worshiping God, but I'll also point out to you that the worship that they did was not what the Bible said was supposed to happen on the Sabbath day. It was just a bunch of man's rules that lifted up an exalted man. It was legalism illustrated. But I want to say to you at the, on this, at the same time that it is not teaching that Sunday is not important. I, I, let me just uh, state some things very plainly to you here today. Christians have always worshipped the Lord on the Lord's Day. Amen. And you should every Lord's Day. Matter of fact, it is something that distinguishes and our faith and sets us apart from the lost. You know, this whole trend of, uh, you know, have a service anytime you want. we got a Friday night service. It's more convenient for the people. Well, church isn't meant to be convenient. It's meant to honor God. It's meant to uh, be a time when you <coughs> dedicate your day to the Lord and you worship Him for the very reason that He is alive and that He's in heaven and He has accomplished the redemption plan and that He's worthy of worship. Pastor, you believe you ought to be in church every time the doors are open? Yes. Mm -hmm. If you want to ask me that question, you're going to use this passage of Scripture to ask the question. If you want to ask me the question, I'll just tell you, based upon this passage of Scripture... And you want to ask it the way the Pharisees do? I'll give you the answer. It's the Lord's. It's the Lord's. You tell me what you think. You say, well, you know, a lot of preachers talk about Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. And they talk about how the Bible says that we're not to be forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. And do you know, Pastor, that what those people, those Hebrew Christians had done is they completely rejected the Christian faith and gone back into Judaism? Yeah, they'd started worshiping on the Sabbath day. And so, let me just tell you this. Don't go to church on Saturday. Does that make you happy? Don't do it. I forbid it. And I, God forbids it. I just think it's bad. Uh, what if there's a special meeting? Skip it. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm joking just a little bit because understand and know that it's not the same thing as a Lord's Day. It just mm -hmm. isn't. And the Lord's Day is important to the Lord Jesus and it ought to be set aside to worship Him. Well, what if you work kind of job that forces you to work on the Lord's Day? Never have. I never have. Well, you know, that's easy for you to say, but some people are in a line of work. I'm just telling you what my conviction is this morning. And you, you asked me, remember when I, when I asked the question for you? Do you think you ought to go to church every time the doors are open? The answer is yes. And I'll just, I'll just state it this way, and you'll know it to be true in your life. The Lord won't bless you the same if you don't. You mean God's going to remove His hand of blessing on me? I'm just telling you, he, he won't honor your faithfulness if you never commit it. God does not honor faithfulness that is not acted out upon. Faith is acted out. Amen. And a faith which is not practiced is not faith. And a person that believes that it's important to be in church goes, and God honors it. And he always has with every single person in the world who's ever made it their policy never to miss church. Period. You check it out, and the only reason you disagree is because you haven't exercised that faith. It's not your conviction. And God's never honored something that's not your conviction. That's just a fact. Now, Pastor, you're stepping on toes and you're going where you don't have any business to belong. Don't you know, even in the, in the leadership in our church, our Sunday school teachers, they um, 
teach, you know, they, 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 they work on Sunday nights sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you'll see Brother Chris and Brother Alex show up and lead singing in pajamas because they're going to go to work and they stay for church as long as they can. Well, they make a little statement about them and they won't even mind my doing so. If they didn't uh, uh, work their schedules so much, they wouldn't have to do it nearly so often as they do. And so, uh, for instance, if they had uh, gone on a trip to Colorado last week, they wouldn't be working tonight. And so, um, and you can go talk to them about telling them I said so. Neither of them will be at all offended about what I say because he'll agree with it. And so, uh, you want to, um, all I'm saying is, is that if you're faithful, God honors it. Period. And you don't ever have to take the low road. You can always take the high road of faith. You don't ever have to do the bare minimum. See, bare minimum says, what's the law? What's the rule? I'll do whatever I have to. But when you honor God, you just say, God, everything I have and am is yours. And I'll do whatever, whatever you want me to. And I just have a conviction. I just think God wants us to worship him on the Lord's day. Amen. I just think that, I think that the whole day Sunday, it's it set aside to that. Yeah, well, Pastor, don't you know that what you believe you've got some inconsistencies in? I do, and they trouble me a little bit. And so I'll tell you what they are. And so you can help me with it. Maybe you could set some standards that would encourage me in it. You know, one of the things that bothers me a little bit is going to lunch somewhere on a Sunday where I invite people to come to church, and I think they can't even come to church because I'm eating in their restaurant today. If we didn't eat in their restaurants, and, we, and if we observed the Lord's Day, then they... Would, their jobs wouldn't force them to work on Sundays, and so it's kind of our fault. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, so that, that bothers me a little bit, and uh, it's probably going to work itself into a radical conviction that you won't like, but uh, we'll see what happens. Um, but just think about that a little bit. We, we, we force people to do things that are against what we believe. And, uh, well, you know, we're not going to work on Sunday, but we'll eat in a restaurant where somebody does. And so, um, I, boy, when I meet somebody that says, you know, I do all my shopping on Saturday and I do all my food preparation and I'm careful on Sunday not to uh, shop. And people say, legalist! I say, well, that's, that's a pretty good idea. I think I should probably do that too. That uh, uh, ought to be something that we as Christians... See, Christians don't go around uh, saying, Jesus, why, why don't your disciples do this? So that we can say, well, we don't have to do it or, or it's not the law and so I don't have to. See, a Christian always says, Jesus, what would honor and please you and be a good testimony to the lost? Maybe be a good testimony to the lost when next time you went into Albertsons and you say the person I haven't seen you in a while, they say, well, I always work Sundays. And you say, oh, okay. Well, I'm always in church on Sundays. And so um, I, don't, and I don't shop on Sundays. You say, Pastor, you're going to make them think that it's all about the law. No, it'll make them think there's something different about being in Christ. And isn't there? Amen. Isn't there? And back to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. The question then is, if um, it's talking about just leaving the church altogether, and it's not talking about going to every service, the question is, how many are we allowed to miss? How many church services could you miss? Say, all right, you're going to keep the Lord's Day, the bare minimum ought to be one service Sunday morning a week, right? Isn't that true? Bare minimum? I mean, if you're going to keep the Lord's Day at least once a week, right? What if you had to miss one? I mean, can't your oxen fall in the ditch? Sometimes, I just want to say this, the people who believe that their oxen are always in the ditch on Sundays, they just always are. They just, if you believe that, you'll ne you just, you never be able to honor the Lord and it. that'll just always be the situation. You know, the devil knows that. And if you're the kind of Christian that asks, how much do I have to honor God? What's the bare minimum? What's the necessity? Satan knows that and he'll set the bare minimum, not God. Satan will set the rule, not God. And Satan's rule will be, well, this will come up this week, and that will come up this week, and this will come up that week, and this thing and that thing. And I think that we've taken a passage of Scripture that's meant to help us to understand the righteousness of Jesus Christ, and we've misconstrued it. First of all, it's not talking about the Lord's Day. Anytime you see talking about the Lord's Day, you find Christians honoring it. You never find the Bible anywhere saying you don't have to keep the Lord's Day. You, know, you find the people saying there's exceptions to keeping the Sabbath day, but I challenge you to find some place in the Bible that says the Lord's Day is unimportant, or that it is for man and not the Sabbath. And that brings me to the second point. First of all, the Sabbath is for man. God made man. He knows their limitations. He knows we need rest. And uh, I'll point it out to you this morning. I think we'd have a better spirit in church. I'm not saying you've got a bad spirit. I'm saying I think we'd have a better spirit if people weren't so tired today. I just think so. And it's not picking on anybody, but I, you've heard me do this before. I've recommended sleep on Saturday nights. I recommend clearing your Saturday night schedule. I try to encourage our, our teen activity, not go past 8 o'clock so people can be in bed by 9. 
I really think that, you know, we need to be done. We pray at 8 at the end of the day, and 